Getting rich quick. It's a tempting idea, isn't it? Here's my story. I'm on holiday with some good friends. I've got a little bit of money saved up and I lose the majority of it on that holiday. Reckless spending, breaking a phone, it's a whole other story, but I'm home with pennies in my bank account. And around this time, I was losing my passion for acting, something I'd been doing since I was a kid. And when you aspire to be an actor, you kind of just assume that you're gonna be broke until you make it. But now I actually needed money. I didn't have that mental safety net anymore. So I go on the internet and I start searching for things like how to make money online. I begin encountering the these gurus, you know, the Ty Lopez's, the Grant Cardone's, people who at any other point in time I would have considered sleazy at best. But I fell into this rabbit hole of desperation. These concepts like passive income or being your own boss were presented to me on a silver spoon and I ate it all up. I began to hate the idea of a nine to five. It was like admitting failure in life. These gurus sold me on a dream, a dream of getting rich quick, dangling it in front of me like a carrot on a stick, except it was an online course teaching me how to do it. I didn't know it then, but I was diving into the realm of get rich quick schemes. Catch somebody at the right time under the right context, no matter how educated, smart or self-aware you are, you can fall for a get rich quick ski. Snake oil salesman. It's a phrase that's been around for a while, usually referring to someone who's dishonest, a con artist, a trader of fake medicines, a grifter. But have you ever wondered where the term came from? There was this man named Clark Stanley who traveled around America selling rattlesnake oil through what are known as medicine shows. Large crowds would gather as Stanley claimed his snake oil, based on Chinese water snake oil, could cure all sorts of ailments known to man. Only this wasn't true at all. And when Stanley's rattlesnake oil was examined in 1916, it was found to have no snake oil in it at all. It was worthless. From then on, the phrase snake oil salesman has been around in pop culture, depicted as a salesman that would go from town to town peddling their cures to the vulnerable. These people have existed all throughout time with a different pitch or version of the same scheme, but it's the methods, the tools of influence that remain constant. I believe I was roped into the modern internet version of snake oil salesman, the online guru that would set ridiculously high expectations around their products, despite the product largely not being able to fulfill on those expectations. The scam isn't an online course, but the salesman's marketing around it. And here I am again, wondering why I, or anyone for that matter, falls for something like this. So I decided to take a look at some of the snake oil salesmen of the not so distant past. And I came across infomercials, the 80s answer to medicine shows. The dream of financial success. Thanks to Gary Cochran, I've made over $4,000. Checks, money orders, and major credit cards are accepted. Let Gary Cochran show you how to get a second paycheck Hawaiian style. These are infomercials, and they became huge in the 1980s and 90s. They're essentially program length commercials that can last anywhere from 28 minutes to 60 minutes in length, usually airing outside of primetime hours. We're talking 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. A lot of infomercials promoted legitimate products, sometimes with a celebrity backing it, but they also attracted a ton of questionable products, individuals, and marketing tactics. Throughout the program, watchers would be presented with a toll-free number to call to place their order for the advertised product. For a snake oil salesman, this was the new medicine show. Motivational and personal development products ran rampant, and along with it came Get Rich Quick infomercials. This man was called Don Laprie, a self-proclaimed king of infomercials. I found tiny classified ads, and I placed those ads in around a thousand other newspapers around the country. That's how I generated over $50,000 a week. And guess what? He promised that you could too. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you live. I don't care how much money you have. Anyone with a lick of sense can do this. I got a system. This system. Just how easy it is. Easily. It's just too easy to be real. And here's where we notice the patterns begin to emerge. Le Pre promises four essential things, that you can get rich, that it can happen quickly, and that anyone can do it. And he has a system that can help you. Don Lepre was selling three programs, each supposedly teaching people how to run tiny classified ads in newspapers and make a profit from it. But the truth is this, most people buying these programs wouldn't have been able to generate the sort of money that Lepre was promising, because making a profit from classified ads was not as easy as Lepre was making them out to be. And consider the obvious here, Lepre was making money from selling the programs on the infomercial not through tiny classified ads. But remember the patterns, because Get Rich Quick schemes promise the same things over and over again. A step-by-step -step system. And then I finally developed a system. Pretty easy to do if you just follow my system step-by-step. Step. It's not that you can't make money through real estate or classified ads. It's that the way in which these programs 
are marketed are completely polar opposite to the realities of what they're trying to sell. Snake oil had its benefits, but it was by no means a miracle cure. When I look back at the internet gurus that I knew of, I see the exact same patterns emerging. The promise of a business model like dropshipping, but packaged and marketed in such a way that will leave someone thinking that it's an easy gig. How would you like to make an extra $1,000 a month for doing absolutely nothing, even for the most average of people? Let me tell you my situation. I needed more cash. My bills exceeded my income. Am I the only one with that problem? I doubt it. In my case, I was desperate for money. I wanted to make my parents proud. I felt like working a nine to five meant I was a failure. My vulnerability is what roped me into this world. And all the while I was sat there thinking that I was the clever one, that I had taken the red pill whilst others around me couldn't see what I saw in the gurus that I followed. Now these schemes were centered around the idea of teaching someone how to get rich quick. But unfortunately, infomercials and the gurus I encountered are only the tip of the iceberg that are get rich quick schemes. Because trust me, things get a lot more darker from here. But this drink was nothing more than a front for something much darker. Verve was created by the company known as Vima, a multi-level marketing company that used distributors to sell their products. And as a distributor, you could get a cut from selling Vima's products. Even better, as a distributor, you could recruit other distributors and earn a commission from anything the distributors below you made. Blink twice and you'll miss what's going on here. See, Vima wasn't focused on the selling of their products. They were more interested in recruiting more distributors. Now, if one person recruited five people and those five people each recruited five more and so on and so forth you can only keep this going for 14 levels before you run out of the population of the entire world in this type of scheme only those who get in right at the start make money whilst the majority lose their money and it's very likely that by the time you've heard about the scheme you're already too late almost 90 percent of the recruits in vima were making less than four thousand dollars a year and that's not including the money that they had to spend on buying the actual product in truth the majority of vima's young recruits were losing money vima was a scam that operated in a cult-like fashion to keep the recruits inside of the company and when i found out what i'd been falling into i felt a lot of anger and shame Here's how it goes. To keep you inside of the scheme, two critical elements will be at play. The first is blaming yourself to make you feel as though this must be your fault, despite the scheme's exaggerated promises. No matter how hard you work, as they tell you, they're like, you're doing something wrong. There's something you're not doing right. So it's with your head, because you start to lose your self-confidence. And you're sitting there like, what could I possibly be doing wrong? Vima would often promote the pseudo-scientific belief of the law of attraction, one that made them think that if they weren't successful, they only had themselves to blame, ignoring the fact that they are in a scheme that is designed to fail. The second, although not always present, is that the scheme will create a community around it. Everybody say, yes, coach. Yes, coach. Do it again. Yes, coach. Do it again. Specifically, a community that is told to not listen to outside criticism, to distance themselves from those who are not inside of the scheme as well. We all belong in various communities, there's nothing wrong with that. But when that community specifically aims to cut you off from any outside opinions or criticisms, then it's a massive red flag. One aspect that makes cults so effective in their brainwashing is doing exactly that. They have an ability to control the information that the members are receiving, and all the information had to come from them. Outside opinion would be immediately discredited as haters or dream stealers but let's pause for a second because there's a slight problem with this deconstruction and the problem is that many of these elements exist in legitimate products businesses brands and influencers sometimes it's very easy to spot a get rich quick scam get rich quick infomercials are almost too easy to notice once you understand the rhetoric and the promises that these schemes typically make but other times it's harder to distinguish not every person selling a course is promoting a get-rich-quick scheme. My system for distinguishing the good from the bad is by first looking at the expectations that are presented in the packaging. Do these expectations seem realistic? Who is the person and company behind it? Does a Google search of that individual or company result in incriminating information, poor reviews, or red flags? If you're being promised a product or service that claims to make it easy, that's the biggest red flag you need. Going through all of these schemes, understanding how this stuff has been around for centuries 
explains how everyone from every generation has fallen for it. It makes you realize our brains are filled with many biases, things that at any point can trip you up if you're not careful. Seeing the patterns in get rich quick schemes was a first step in stopping myself from going any further. But there was one last thing for me to do. I had to stop buying the dream and start doing something. Anything that didn't involve me sitting around fantasizing about passive income or a laptop lifestyle or the idea of wealth and especially the idea that I could get rich easily because doing that ultimately made me susceptible to being influenced in the way that I was. Remember, only you are in charge of your happiness.